Dear friends, welcome to another episode of today's Warfare Today. In this video, we will discuss the age-old question involving tracked armored vehicles and wheeled armored vehicles and what the war in Ukraine is showing us about this. When it comes to armored vehicles, there's always a big debate involving the advantages and disadvantages between tracked vehicles and wheeled vehicles, a debate that intensified during the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a terrible conflict that involves a high number of armored vehicles, both those on tracks and those on wheels. And the war in Ukraine is revealing to us about this debate. Before we move forward, we need to quickly discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each type of armored vehicle. Starting with tracked vehicles, the main advantage is undoubtedly the great mobility in especially difficult terrains. Tracks distribute the vehicle's weight over a larger area, ensuring much better mobility on more unstable terrains, like mud and snow. With these latter two types of terrains being very common in Ukraine, between late autumn and early spring. Another important advantage of tracked armored vehicles is their ability to carry a much larger payload. Precisely because they can distribute their weight better, this translates into more advanced and efficient defensive systems and, above all, more powerful weaponry. This leads to another significant advantage, which is greater stability. Allowing tracked armored vehicles to engage in continuous firing of high-caliber weapons without compromising the vehicle's stability, even when firing while moving. However, just like in life, there are also important disadvantages, starting with speed on busy or semi-paved roads. Tracked vehicles are comparatively much slower than wheeled armored vehicles. Maintaining tracked armored vehicles is also much more costly and challenging, with the same being true for logistics, both for maintenance and transportation of the vehicle itself since they tend to be much heavier and can't travel long distances on their own. And now, regarding wheeled vehicles, their main advantage is indeed speed on roads and less rugged terrains, making them perfect for combat in urban environments or for large movements to sectors farther away from the battlefield. Maintenance is also much simpler and easier, and the same can be said for the logistics involving their deployment. In terms of disadvantages, these vehicles have greatly reduced mobility in difficult terrains, as they can't distribute the weight of the armored vehicle as evenly and widely as tracked vehicles. This means that it's much easier for a wheeled armored vehicle to get stuck in muddy terrain than a tracked one. The fact that they can't distribute the weight as evenly on the ground also results in a smaller payload and greater instability. And although there are armored vehicles armed with 105 and even 120 mm cannons, as is the case with the Italian Centauro II, the inherent instability of this platform prevents a firing rate comparable to that of a tracked armored vehicle with an equivalent cannon. In the case of Ukraine, since the start of the Russian invasion, we have seen many wheeled armored vehicles in the important role of transporting and supporting infantry in the field, mainly in urban areas. As an example of vehicles in this category, we have the Russian BTR-80, a wheeled armored vehicle with an 8x8 configuration, capable of transporting seven passengers in addition to its three crew members. It's armed with a heavy machine gun and a 30mm automatic cannon, and it's being extensively used by the Russians in all urban battles they've been involved in on the Ukrainian side. The spotlight goes to the BTR-4 Bucephalus, also 8x8, dedicated to the same mission as the BTR-80. The common characteristic of these armored vehicles is that, because they are wheeled, they are used almost exclusively in cities or on more stable and firm terrains. However, specifically for the Ukrainian offensive initiated in June 2023, the Ukrainians needed an armored vehicle for this kind of mission, but capable of operating in difficult terrain, including mud and snow. This is why the United States delivered and continues to deliver the M2A2 Bradley to the Ukrainians an armored vehicle designed for the same mission as the BTR-8 and the Bucephalus, that is, to transport troops and provide fire support on the ground. But with an important difference, it's built on tracks. This allows it to do on Ukrainian fields what the BTR-80 and the Bucephalus do in cities. The experience of using tracked and wheeled armored vehicles in Ukraine is confirming a well-known fact in cavalry. When the goal is to fight in terrains like mud and snow, an army must necessarily send tracked armored vehicles. But if the mission involves combat in cities or in areas with firm terrain covered by many roads, 
then wheeled armored vehicles, much more agile and swift in such terrain, represent the smarter choice. All of this leads to the conclusion that there's not really a rivalry between tracked and wheeled armored vehicles. Each of them is designed, engineered, and built for combat in very specific environments.